Welcome to special Lockdown Crossover Edition. I'm Roman Thomas off of Lockdown Huskies. That's Jacob Goins with Lockdown Hoosiers. This is going to be a lot of fun, Jacob. We got a special cross crossover edition coming at all our everydayers as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place the first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Jacob, we've got a really great show coming at both of our viewers today on this wonderful Friday. We're going to play a little game at the very end. We're, we call it Your Team Wins If. We'll get into that Uh-oh. because... I, I I mean, I don't know about you. I've gotten a lot of hate from Indiana fans for just simply talking about this game. We'll get into that yeah. as well. We're going to get into some key matchups to watch in this game. But first of all, this is weird. This is a conference matchup. Shout out to some of my, my friends over at the, the UW SID department where they put it out. This is the first time Washington has traveled to Bloomington since 1975 is the year. And it's a conference Ooh. game now. So this is this is interesting. It is. It's really fun because that's what's cool about this unique college football season, not just in the Big Ten, but just across the whole country because there's so many new matchups, first-time matchups, or like you said, matchups we just haven't seen since the 60s and 70s and random bowl matchups at times. I mean, it's really, really fun to see these types of, of brands get on the football field for the first time in a long time. And this game is sneaky. It's sneaky good. It's not going to be one that people, I think, outside of of Washington or Indiana really try hard to go find, but I'm telling them that they should because I think this is going to be a very good game. Indiana fans are confident now. Maybe even a little cocky there, Roman. But this is going to be a lot of fun. A <laughs> little, little bit where, you know, my, my co-host Lawrence Hansen and I, our Monday show, we, we had to start with the, the biggest news of the week, which yeah. is Curtis Rourke is not going to play in this game. One of the Heisman front runners at this point in time. Also, shout out Michael Penix. Got, got to shout him out. A little bit of love coming both ways here. Yeah, but there's a relationship there. It's fine. You absolutely. didn't have to bring it up, but you did. It's okay. No, I did. Hey, every Indiana fan I've ever talked about, Mike, has just said nothing but love for him. Fantastic. Sure. Dude, love yep. him as much off the field as we do on the field. I can echo that sentiment 1,000%. But Curtis Work is the biggest story in this matchup. And my co-host and I got, got a lot for saying, hey, this is going to be interesting. Where Taven Jackson's really good. And I'm really curious to see what he can do in this Kurt Signetti offense. Because, Jacob, I watched a lot of that Nebraska game. And it felt like it was all about the timing in there. Where it was just three-step drop, balls out. Which is awesome because it's been so effective all season long. Which is what makes the offense so effective. It, it's not overly complicated. You see offenses nowadays in 2024 where it's like, okay, how can we outsmart the defense? How can we catch them sleeping? How can we find the smallest crevice in the defense to try and take advantage of it? Indiana's not worried about that. They brought in Curtis Rourke from Ohio, a guy that nobody really knew, but Kurt Signetti, when he came from James Madison, said, that's my guy, brought in a ton of talent around him. Offensive line is playing like one of the best units in the Big Ten. Two running backs in in Ellison and Lawton that are doing their thing and playmakers on the outside. And you're exactly right. The offense is simple. You have one or two reads or get out. And It's worked to perfection. Indiana's one of the highest scoring offenses in the country right now. And the problem is, going into this game against Washington, Curtis Rourke's not going to be there. I'm glad you mentioned Heisman in there. I keep throwing that on Lockdown Hoosiers, too. And we're going to make it happen. I don't care what we got to do. But he's not going to be here for this game. Had thumb surgery on earlier in the week on Monday. They say he could be back next week, which blows my mind. But we'll talk about that with Matt Sheehan next week of Locked on Spartans. Curtis Work not here. Taven Jackson's going to be the guy. And here's the good news. He looked really good a week ago in the second half against Nebraska. And this is not going to be his first start in major college football. He was Indiana starter last year. Now, didn't play very well, got replaced, but he was the starter a year ago. So he understands what it takes to step into the stadium, lead the team on offense. And luckily, the offense is so, I'm not going to say basic or easy. It's just very structure to where you have one or two things you do them and you move on to the next play and I think that's going to make this very very simple for Taven Jackson against a Washington defensive front that I don't think gets enough love I completely agree with you there but another another part of that that I'm really interested in is this Washington secondary where they haven't necessarily faced the strongest quarterbacks this season I'd be the first person to tell you that but even against those that that competition, they are number one in the nation right now, allowing 123 yards per game through the air. They've been really good. Efficient's Prysock, 
Thaddeus Dixon, Elijah Jackson, Jordan Shaw, another former Indiana guy. There's a lot of talent in the secondary, and I've been really impressed with how it's all come together. And shout out to Steve Belichick. He's done a really good job of tying this whole group together. And Jacob, I'm, I, I want to jump back over the defensive line there because I'm really glad you mentioned that where that's one thing where Washington's getting uh senior Zach Durfee back this week. He missed the Iowa game with a toe injury. Looks like he's back full strength, which is nice to see, but Washington's pass rush has been really, really solid this year. They got 14 sacks. And I think that with the amount of interesting and unique stunts and blitzes and different things that they do up front, it could cause some problems for Indiana's offensive line. So that's a matchup. I'm really excited to watch this weekend. You mentioned the offensive line, though, and I brought them up as well. I'm being yelled at at Locked on Hoosiers for not talking about the offensive line enough. And I am I am at fault because they're playing so good. And it's all across the board, whether it's in pass pro or in run blocking and creating holes. They're just doing their job. And I think that's why you've seen Curtis Rourke play so well because he has all the time in the world and even if it is just a three-step drop he gets it out and there's no pressure he's not being sacked he's not being hit now he you know messed his thumb up and had to get surgery on that but that was just a football play and so the offensive line has done everything they've needed and hopefully Indiana doesn't have to attack that secondary of Washington because I don't think Taven Jackson has shown the downfield accuracy long-term because he didn't have it a year ago and just played a half against Nebraska. So if we want to stick with five, six yard dump offs and just running the football, that's fine by me. I uh, No, I completely get that where that's what has been Washington's biggest struggle this year is defending the run, especially where, you know, you look at two weeks ago against, against Iowa, Caleb Johnson, did his thing. He's just a spectacular running back, man. Watching that guy play was something special, but that's been Washington's biggest weakness. And I asked Steve Belichick about it on Tuesday. And I said, what is it that makes this Indiana offense so, so effective where he described the balance where he talked about passing running RPOs. There's a little bit of everything in this offense. Yep. And I went back and did some extra research after the fact, Jacob, Indiana is one of two teams in the country. And I'm sure you know this as well as anybody that is passing for 300 yards a game and running for 200 yards a game. And yep. one thing that Jed Fish has said a couple of times this season is that's one of his biggest goals. And it's been really impressive to watch this Indiana offense go at it. But when I look at this Washington defense, I think they have the scheme and the bodies to give them a really tough challenge on Saturday. My question to you, and I know we have more time to talk about this, but Indiana's defense has been something that I've talked about is just as impressive as the offense. And so, look, Indiana has proven they'll get in a shootout what they need to. They haven't had to do that yet, but maybe drop 56 points on Nebraska, but the defense gave up just seven. That's what I think is going to win this game is the Washington offense versus the Indiana defense because I think we know what we're getting with Indiana's offense and Washington's defense. I think it's the other side of the ball for both teams that will determine this outcome. Well, how about we get into that on the other side of the break? Love it. We'll get there right after message from our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and so many more. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineup active. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. And you can join over 10 million users and sign up today. And if you do sign up today, you can get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Guaranteed, Price Picks is the best way to win that real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than sixty seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on Price Picks. Price Picks have been so good to me. I love going and checking out some of their basketball stuff. I personally, hey, shout out to the Celtics. Shout out Jason Tatum. He's been really good to me. Anytime I go on the Prize Picks app, and you can do that as well. You can download the app today and use code Lockdown College to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. That's code Lockdown College. Prize Picks, run your game. So, Jacob, you asked me about the this Washington offense versus the Indiana defense. Yep, I've this is something I've talked about all season long over on Lockdown Huskies. This Washington offense has been really, really effective. They have outgained their opponent in every single game this season. Shout out to Will Rogers, who's done a really good job. 
Shout out to Denzel Boston, who just got added to the Blitnikoff Award watch list. Jonah Coleman's one of the best running backs in the Big Ten, if not the country. W- watching that guy run is so much fun. I just have like a scheduled weekly tweet at this point. Is <laughs> Watching Jonah Coleman is very, very fun. Indiana yeah, yeah. fans are going to get to know him very soon. And the problem, because yards aren't everything. Points are the name of the game, as I get reminded constantly in our comment section. And, and I know, points are the name of the game. Washington has struggled to score points, especially inside the 20. They are 14 for 28 at converting touchdowns inside the 20-yard line. That yeah. needs to change. It's, oh, it's rough. And yeah, when brutal. I, yeah, oh, man, it, is, it has been tough to watch at some points. And that's something that Jed Fish said, his coaching staff did a really deep dive in on the over the bye week. And he said he, you know, Gave Jonah Coleman some time off. So they did a couple, you know, minor bumps and bruises. No, no issue there. Just wanted to make sure that he's 100% healthy. And I think that that's going to be really key when it comes to what Washington can do is once you get down into the red zone where, you know, there's been some struggles on special teams. Grady Gross, the kicker, has has had his own fair share of struggles. But if you're not scoring touchdowns, you don't need to rely on Grady. And, you know, this is this would be some crazy math here, but six is more than three. I know that's absolutely insane. Wow. It's cra- crazy, right? Wow. They teach us. Never- they teach that in Indiana. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Good, good. Glad, glad to hear that. Where <laughs> that's one of the biggest things where I think that Washington needs to do a much better job of running the ball deep in the red zone. That hasn't been one of their fortes so far this season, but there's also been a fair amount of self-inflicted uh, issues with penalties and things like that. Those have started to subside in recent weeks, but when I look at this Washington offense, it's been really efficient. The numbers with the yardage show that the play calling has worked for the majority of the game. But once the field gets compressed, that's where the issues have arisen. And that's it's going to be a really big prove-it game for Jed Fish, in my opinion, because he needs to show that he can sort those issues out. The most points that Indiana has given up this year was against Maryland when it was 28. The other's been 24. And even in those games, that's the few times that I think Indiana just had to outscore somebody, and they did easily. I'm not saying just score one more point. I'm saying they scored several scores more than those opponents. And so when it comes to the Washington offense, and and Will Rogers in particular, right? I look at him as a guy who's just a pure pocket passer, but can hurt you if he has to. I think that's what he used to be. Is he still that way at Washington? The few pieces of film that I've seen, I mean, it just it, it seems that when in doubt, he wants to throw the football, right? You're absolutely correct. But Washington doesn't just deploy one quarterback. There, There's yeah. going to be a, a set amount of packages for freshman Demond Williams, who, watching that kid run, he is he has a very, very bright future. Where they, they trust him with his arm, but the dual threat, the escapability, everything he can do outside the pocket has been one of the biggest reasons that they're so excited about him because when he gets the ball and he gets gets a sliver of room, he can turn on the Jets and he can go. Where you're absolutely right about Will Rogers, and that's what you're going to see for the majority of the game. Yes, he's going to want to sit back and throw the ball. The question that I have is, Indiana has a really nice pass rush. They're tied for the Big Ten lead in 21 sacks. Washington, the offensive line is an all-new group compared to last season. And they're also going to be without starting left tackle Maximus McCree, who dislocated his thumb against Iowa. And we're going to see how it plays out. It's going to be one of two redshirt freshmen, most likely, in Sawani Fasola or Kelly Tafai, where when I look at this Indiana defense and what concerns me the most is if they're able to get pressure with four like Iowa was. Yeah, and, you know, talking about key matchups, I know we have that in our in our script here, is is – Aiden Fisher is the linebacker that everybody needs to know in this Indiana defense because he just comes at you from all angles. He'll come up the middle, off the edge. He'll drop back in coverage if he has to. He's just an animal. And the problem is, Roman, if you focus on him, there are others. And the fact is, Indiana has done a really, really good job in this new wave of defense in college football. Rather than just saying, hey, let's line up man for man and just see if we can break through the line, Indiana has adjusted to the new version of college football on defense where it's, how can we disguise this? How can we make the same formation look the same but operate three different ways. And that's what Indiana does such a good job as. They'll bring it from the edge and up the middle. And, and guys you don't even think are going to bring pressure, delayed blitzes and things like that, which that's not a new concept. I'm just saying Indiana disguises it really, really well. And everybody is able to get home to the quarterback. And that's what they did a week ago 
against Dylan Rayola in Nebraska. They made his life a living hell, and that's how they were able to get him flustered, not really playing all that well. And you hold him to seven points against the Nebraska offense that lots of people are still scared of. And so I think if Indiana can do what they've been doing, get pressure on the quarterback, the secondary is really solid. D'Angelo Pons is the guy you need to know back there. He is Daryl Rivas 2.0. You don't throw towards him because he just is a ball hawk. And that's the thing that Indiana does very, very well. They create turnovers on defense and they don't turn it over on offense. That's a winning recipe in college football. So I told you, man, I think it's Indiana's defense versus Washington's offense. That's the sides of the football people aren't talking about enough. And I think that determines who wins. I really, really do. So I, I really like where you're going with that. I want to dive into one thing that you talked about there, and it's the, the coverage disguises. Because do you know who's also awesome at that? And I don't just say this as a like lifelong New England, New England Patriots fan. I yeah, say this as somebody yeah. who got to watch them throughout fall camp. That's Steve Belichick. Yep. Now, hold on. I'm not, I'm not just talking for my bias here. One thing that we talked to Will Rogers after Washington, uh, they held a scrimmage about halfway through fall camp. And one of the first things that Will Rogers said when he was talking about this defense was the amount of looks that they can throw at you, the amount of things that they do, you know, they change from pre to post snap, the, the amount of just players that are lining up to do one thing and disguised and do something completely different. Yep. It's insane. And it's the hardest thing I've ever had to watch. And it's the hardest thing I've ever had to look at. And he said, this is the hardest defense I'm going to see all year. And I don't mean that as a slight to Indiana. I just mean okay. that as okay. watching yeah. all, all the things that Steve Belichick has been able to do where, you know, there's a corner, he, he lined, he's lined up and it looks like cover three, but he rotate, rotates into a too high safety. There are so many different little things like that that take place in this defense that I'm just curious to see with a fifth-year quarterback what that might look like and how he might be able to decipher some of those things. And, and you know, something I've talked about on Locked on Hoosiers is I think a lot of that has to do with the in-helmet communication, right? I mean, think about that in terms of the quarterback, but people forget defense has it too. And most yeah. of the time it's a linebacker. And so it's like, okay, I know it cuts off right at 15 seconds. And so you can still say, all right, let's line up this way. We are in this formation, but I want this guy to bring pressure. I want this guy to bring pressure. I want you to drop off and we're actually going to bring delayed blitz from this side or this side or do whatever the case may be. And that just adds such a new wrinkle to a defense like Washington or like Indiana. And I think that's why it's made them so successful is defenses are smarter than they've ever been. So are right. offenses. But I think defenses are smarter and more scheme heavy than they've ever been. And that's what makes it so exciting to watch. So, Jacob, I have a question for you. We've talked about the offense. We've talked about the defense. Let's get into some of the unsung heroes of football. And that's special teams. Because Washington has struggled on special teams for, through the first seven weeks of the year. This is something that I was talking to our buddy Trent Condon over at Lockdown Hawkeyes a couple of weeks ago. And he started talking about Iowa's punting game. And I was like, oh, this is my welcome to the Big Ten moment. Because, you know, as somebody who grew up watching the Pac-12, we don't talk about punters. That's That's not something that exists. So when I, when I, what can you tell me about Iowa special, or excuse me, Iowa, Indiana special teams that I need to know for this weekend? Uh, the fact is our special teams unit is fine. They haven't had to do a whole lot because <laughs> Indiana scored a lot of points. Uh, field goals, four for four <laughs> this year. We've got four it? total field goals. Yes, <laughs> four field goals and 100% on extra points. I don't know what that number is, but it's 100% on extra points. And in terms of punting, they had a couple of really nice plays against Nebraska that flipped the field position in the few times that Indiana does have to punt the football. So um, it's... I'll put it this way. I think for Indiana, it's something we just don't talk about a whole lot right now, which is a huge blessing in disguise. It's something that it's not going to lose you the game, but I don't know how we'd feel if it was like, all right, Indiana is tied with Washington 17 apiece in the fourth quarter, five seconds to go, and here comes the kicking unit to win the game. We haven't been in that spot yet, so I don't know if we feel confident in that or not, but the work they've done up to this point has literally been perfect. See, that's fair. I, I like where you're going with that because for the Washington side of things, the coverage has been like the, the field goal kicking is one thing. There have been some struggles there. I, I, I have a feeling those will end up straightening themselves out. But the biggest issue, in my opinion, has been the kick coverage, where through the first four or five weeks of the season, Washington allowed the most kick return yards in the nation. Oh. So, yeah, so there were some issues there as well. And talked to Daniel Ngata, one of the, the kick returners 
uh, on Tuesday. And one of the things he said was, yeah, it felt like, you know, we might not have all been super focused on doing our jobs there, but that's something else we really honed in on over the bye week. So that's something that when I, when I look at this and I, I look forward, I say, okay, these are the little things that, especially against a team like Indiana that has not trailed all season long, you can't give them any sort of little advantage. And I think special teams might be one of those biggest ones. But Jacob, we're going to have some fun here. Let's get into the, this, this game of your team wins if. Right after message from our good friends over at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Got a, got a couple of little fun odds to throw your way coming at you for this Sunday. A couple of anytime touchdown odds I like. I am I have to start with a Washington alum here where Roma Dunze against the Washington Commanders, that secondary has not been good this season. Let's see if Jaden Daniels plays. That'd be a fun game, but I love Roma Dunze anytime touchdown. And one that's kind of been old faithful for me this year, another you know local Seattle one, but one that I highly recommend. Running back Kenneth Walker, that dude has just been a touchdown machine this year. You should go check out those anytime touchdown odds and so many more over on FanDuel. Jacob, this is going to be fun. Where over on Lockdown Huskies, my co-host Lars Hansen and I, one thing we love to do is bold predictions. But since this is our Friday show, Friday show we've already done bold predictions. So... Let's talk about your team wins this matchup on Saturday, which is going to be on college game day. I don't know if we said that yet on college game day. If I, I think you muted yourself there, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm leaving that in too, by the way. That oh, was, you that definitely was, should. Yeah, good, good. That, that was fantastic. But um, with college yeah. game day in the building. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> The world doesn't want me to speak about Indiana. That's what I've taken enough of that on on the the, the uh, Big Ten squad shows. That everybody, if you hold, missed it, go check that on. out on our channels yesterday. Hold on, I need to stop you there because <laughs> you came in and you started to shoot at me, and I didn't say anything mean in return. I didn't start it in any way, but yeah, I, I, I just yeah. had to get that out there. I'm just continuing what <laughs> Indiana fans have started with a seven and zero football team. We don't know how to act. We don't know what to do. <laughs> We're just, we're out of pocket right now. <laughs> no, that's fair, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to you here. Indiana wins. If what? Indiana wins. If they continue to do literally the exact same thing they have done in every single game, which is such a boring answer, but I'm going to break it down. Okay. One of the highest powered offenses in America, in America, not the big 10, not in the state of Indiana. I'm talking across all 50 United States. Indiana is one of, if not the best, depends on what stats you look at, but they are a high-powered offense. They have just run away from people early and often. And so I want to see them jump on Washington in the first quarter, score multiple touchdowns because this team has proven they can do it. Yes, even with Taven Jackson, I think you can still rely on the run game. I think you can still get it to your playmakers. They don't have to be 40-yard shots downfield. Let them do the work if you're Taven Jackson and take care of the football. So offensively, do exactly what you've been doing. Defensively, what we just talked about, Roman, get after the quarterback, stop the run game, which Indiana does a really good job at. There will be a few times that Washington will break off a big one. Indiana's had the tendency to do that this year. Nine times out of 10, it just doesn't go very far. And so if Indiana can keep everything in front of them, avoid the big plays, let the crowd be into it. It's a sellout at Memorial Stadium. Like we said, college game day is going to be there. People are going to be interested in this game. And I'm telling you, even if you're not an Indiana or Washington fan and have stumbled upon this somehow, watch the game on Saturday. You will really enjoy what you see tomorrow. So for Indiana, as boring as it is, Roman, keep doing what you're doing. And Indiana has a chance to move to eight and zero. Oh. I, I think that's the best possible answer. If it ain't broke, why why fix it? Exactly. Well, what about Washington? What happens? What your team wins Ooh. if what? Oh, there there are so many things that need to go right in in <laughs> this particular sense. Uh, let's start on the offensive side of the ball here. Sure. The offensive line needs to show up. It's it's struggled. It's been. I, I think it could have been worse. I think it it had a re- a better showing than some people think against Michigan's defensive line. And then it all kind of came crashing down against Iowa. So the offensive line, first and foremost, needs to show up against this Indiana pass rush. But 
I trust Jonah Coleman to rip off a couple of big runs where, you know, we talked about how fun he is to watch earlier, specifically the way he's able to just cut things outside. And it's not like one of those Saquon Barkley bounces where, you know, he's going to end up taking a negative play where he's averaging, like, I think it's five or six yards after contact at this point in time too, where you can get your hands on him. You still might not bring him down, right? but he's done a really good job against some very good rushing defenses. He only had nine carries against Iowa, but took it for 80 yards. He was really good against Michigan too. I don't have those numbers right off hand, but that's the number one thing that I'm looking for. And then work in Denzel Boston, Jacob Denzel Boston leads the big 10 in touchdowns with nine or not, t- receiving touchdowns with nine. He's second in the nation with those nine touchdowns. He's been fantastic. If you can find a way to get the ball into your playmaker's hands and protect Will Rogers offensively, you're going to be fine. You've shown that because you've been able to do that all season long. Defensively, you just need to find a way to slow down Indiana. Like it's, it's simple as that where they can do everything well as we've gotten into. So I, I can't pick out one thing. It's keep them behind the sticks, create a few negative plays, create a turnover or two. And the one thing that I really have been trying to highlight as much as I possibly can is in the secondary. This is your biggest test. There is a lot of talent in the secondary. There's a lot of really fun players that I think are going to have a nice future at the NFL level. Show it this weekend because this, this last five games, you got Penn State, also been a really good offense. USC, eh, yeah. we're not going to say anything nice about USC on this year program. And there's also Oregon in, in that stretch. I'm not we're even going to definitely not saying anything nice about them. Absolutely. No, absolutely not. That, that That's one thing we can agree on this week. Spencer's so happy that we don't play them this year. He doesn't even understand. He will never admit (laughs) it. But Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On Ducks is so happy that Indiana does not play because he knows how it would go. That coward isn't even showing his face on here. (laughs) Uh, But no, but then when, when I look at it, I say a lot of these guys have a really nice future at the NFL level. Now prove it this week. And this is going, I, it's, it's weird where every week it's been, and I'm sure it's been the same way for Indiana. Every week is, oh, this is now the biggest test. Oh, this is now the biggest test. Washington has UCLA on their schedule. So I can't say that, you know, that every week is going to be that buildup. But when I look at it, I say, all right, prove it this week against a really, really high powered team. Now, Jacob, we got a couple minutes left here. Let's flip sides for you. Washington wins. If what? Washington wins if they get after Taven Jackson and force some turnovers that Curtis Rourke just doesn't make. That's exactly what they have to do. Get after a guy who struggled with turnovers last year. His stats were, oh, I think two touchdowns, five interceptions in limited action a year ago as a starter. And so he is willing, or I guess he is capable of turning the football over. And here's the thing, though. Taven Jackson will also run with his legs. So I do think if you're Washington, you can't be so Sorry, focused I have a on- question. Yeah. Do you do you run with something other than your legs? I'm sorry. That was like we we brought up Spencer. That was that was the one Spencer joke I had to I had to get in there. Uh, yeah, that was a very <laughs> Spencer response. It was. Uh, um, it, he's very dangerous. How about that? He's dangerous with, with his legs when it comes to running the football. Um, so he is willing to take off. So I think for Washington, you guys got to contain him. Don't let him be the backup superstar. Don't let him come in and get comfortable and get into a rhythm because we've seen it. Once Indiana gets going, they're a really hard train to stop. So Washington, you got to somehow stop the Indiana offense. And I think if you put pressure on Taven Jackson, he might crack or he could just be the second Heisman in waiting. Oh, the, the second husband waiting is did oh, Ashton did he disappear now? I just <laughs> <laughs> had to get that one in there as well. No. Uh, okay. So what about Washington or what, I guess, what about Indiana, right? And from your perspective, what does Indiana, Indiana wins if what? So the first thing, it's very similar. It's getting pressure on Will Rogers and keeping Washington behind the sticks. There have been points this year where they've been really good on third down and there have been points where they struggled on third down. If you can run, if you can find a way to keep Washington off the field, keep them away from sustaining drives, which they did a really good job of early against Iowa, and then it very quickly kind of fell apart. But if you can keep them from sustaining drives, keep the ball out of their playmakers' hands, Washington having having Will Rogers in there, he's not necessarily the most elusive guy, as we said. So there are going to be points where he might take a couple of sacks because he's not able to escape the pocket with some of the young guys on the line. It's, it's, it's been a little rough at points, but you, if you can find a way to control this offense, keep behind the sticks, you're it's, it's going to be, I don't want to say easy, but 
with the way Indiana's offense has been playing, they've been able to get yards on whoever they want and keeping Washington's defense on the field is never a recipe for success for any point in time at any team ever. Are we doing predictions here, Roman? Are we doing predictions at the end? Uh, I usually don't because uh, I'm a jinx. That's why. Okay. I'm the uh, world's largest. Jinx. So, no, no, no. Here. I'll, I'll, I'll give a bold prediction and you give a – you can give a prediction if you want. I got a bold prediction. I like prediction. it. Okay. All right. What's your bold prediction? Uh, I, I gave this one over on Lockdown Huskies as well. Give me Denzel Boston is going to score two touchdowns in this game. Okay, two touchdowns. Wow, I, yep. I didn't think Washington could score two touchdowns in general in Indiana. That's Whoa, crazy. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Maybe. Um, kind of. my all right. Here's my bold prediction. My bold prediction is that Taven Jackson does not turn the football over. I think I like he comes that. in and they just use him as almost a system quarterback, plug and play, turn and hand it off. Five, like I said, five six yard dumps, even some screen passes. Just get it out of his hands. That's my bold prediction. I don't think he turns it over. And I think because of that, Indiana will win going away. I'm I'm worried about this game because Indiana's just got to prove it to me time and time again. Nebraska was a great win. Got to flush that out. Kurt Signetti has done a great job at that this year. So if Taven Jackson doesn't turn it over, Indiana wins going away. Jacob, this has been absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad we got to get together and do this for all the everydayers out there on whichever channel you might be watching this on or however you stumbled upon all this. Welcome. We love to have you here. Go check out everything Jacob's got over on Lockdown Hoosiers or me and my co-host Lars on Lockdown Huskies. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you after the game.